Welcome everybody. Uh, this is uh, General Snow Labs webinar on the identification of Daikon files. Uh, my name is Alberto. I am I'm going to be presenting today. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's let's get started. Uh, this is our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Daikon uh, files and removing PHI from Daikon files. So First, we're going to start with an overview of the DICOM file format, um, the transfer syntaxes, um, what is difficult about uh, the identifying of the, the files. Uh, we're going to talk about what is that we want to remove from the files, so the, the identification targets. Uh, we're going to be using Visual NLP um, to um, to run our code and to uh, execute our examples. So we're going to uh, see an introduction to the Visual NLP library. And then we're going to explain a bit uh, about metadata identification, uh, how uh, we remove uh, PHI from the DICOM images uh, when the PHI is, uh, is uh, within the pixels of the image. And then uh, we're going to see two versions for that. One is going to be like just basic text removal, and another one is going to be using NLP pipeline. So we're going to get into a bit more detail about uh, how to actually choose what to remove of the text present in the image. And then at the, uh, at the end, we're going to see some resources uh, for us to get, uh, for you to get started actually <laughs> using these tools. By the way, um, we're going to be relying on resources uh, that we have on the Visual NLP workshop repo, right? Uh, this is this. Uh, there is a, a webinars folder, you know, and a Daikon uh, date folder that we have here. I want to try to zoom in on this so it is uh, easier to read. Uh, we have the notebooks, uh, the notebook examples for uh, this uh, webinar. We have uh, a license that you're going to need to run some of the examples. And we have uh, the deck of slides that I'm going to be using uh, for presenting today. So everything is, is contained in this folder, right? OK. So uh, yeah, back to uh, the presentation. Uh, by the way, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Back to the presentation, we start um, with the DICOM file format. Um, DICOM stands for Digital Imaging and Communication in Medicine. It's, uh, at this point, is a mature uh, format. Uh, it turned 30 years, you know, the format itself turned 30 years last year. Mm -hmm. uh, something that you're going to learn uh, if you haven't uh, already is that the metadata is as important as the image data itself. So uh, you can, uh, you shouldn't be removing the metadata uh, from the file. Uh, metadata and, and the image need to need to stay together. Basically, that, that's a, a rule. Uh, it was originally developed for for radiology, and then it, it expanded to other to other fields as cardiology, right? Um, and DICOM does not limit the act, its action, you know, to images and associated information, you know, from med uh, from medical devices. So it's also, you know, used for communicating between uh, machines, between devices. Uh, and the standard is like um, is something alive. Let's say it's reviewed five times a year, so it's uh, it's uh, changing um, quite often, I would say. Uh, something that uh, is um, very important uh, in order to, to work with uh, Daikon files is to understand transfer syntaxes. Um, transfer syntaxes uh, encompass a number of different things. Um, first uh, is the compression. Um, you can have uh, different compression types. You can have lossy compression, lossless compression, um, many other things. <laughs> And then you have uh, also rules on how you store the data, for example, the byte ordering, uh, the Indianness. All these are things that are going to be used by your reader or your system, you know, in order to make sense of all the binary information that is contained on the file. 
right so it's it's really important uh, for us not not to you know to mess up with these um, syntaxes when we convert the files from a, an identify version to a de-identify version right so uh, it's it's really important for us uh, uh, to to respect uh, what the original file contain uh, at the input many times uh, people complain about um, moving from uh, lossless uh, compression to lossy compression because of the quality of the file of the images uh, of course is affected so um, we have a, a number of challenges um, because uh, not every system is going to support every codec and so yeah it's it's actually um, we, we have a, a actually put a lot of effort into the visual NLP library to actually be able to handle all these different situations in a manner that is transparent to the user right so uh, next uh, topic about the DICOM file format is the metadata. There are different, um, as I mentioned, you know, the, the metadata is uh, a portion of digital information that is uh, uh, shipped together with the main images or with the images. And yeah, there are different, uh, different groups of information in the metadata uh, according to uh, where they are related to the patient, they are related to studies, uh, they are related to series, images. Uh, there are different groups um, that are uh, concerned with different things. Okay. And last but not least, you know, um, by the way, this is uh, what the, um, sorry, this is uh, what a metadata element looks like. It's, it's typically a tuple like that, you know, a pair uh, of hexadecimal numbers. The first is the group and the ID for the group, and the second element is the ID for the element. Um, these uh, tags sometimes uh, can be uh, manufacturer specific. So basically, uh, they are not documented anywhere, right? And that's a challenge many times for uh, removing the VHI because it's it's not it's not just that you can use a, a hard coded set of tags uh, to actually uh, remove them those you know from the file. There are some um, uh, user defined tags that you actually need to make sense uh, as you process these files, right? Uh, okay, these are uh, some of the challenges. Uh, as I mentioned, the custom tags in the metadata, the multiple transfer syntaxes, and something we didn't mention is the volume of, uh, of the data sets. Many times, you know, DICOM files uh, can be huge. It's not, it's not uh, unlikely to see uh, one of these files uh, having, you know, a size of one gigabyte or more. And if you have multiple patients, you just do the math and you can understand that this can get really big. Okay. And I think it's, it's um... okay, we can, we can uh, still take a look at this um, before we jump into the coding examples. Um, this is uh, more or less uh, what it looks, this is a representation actually of, um, of a DICOM file. Uh, first, at the top, we have the metadata, that is, you know, the list of tags that I mentioned. And below, we have uh, the images. And if you see to the left, we have uh, an image that has all the PHI, you know, a DICOM file that contains uh, all the PHI. And then to the right, we have uh, a file that has been de-identified. So if you pay... Um, close attention, for example, to the image, you see that some of the uh, information there, for example, accession number or the name of the patient, all those have been removed. So uh, uh, actually a uh, uh, black bounding box has been plotted on top of it. And similarly uh, for the metadata, you see that you have uh, empty uh, strings uh, for some of the uh, metadata value values, right? Okay, um, well, we're going to be uh, doing a uh, brief introduction uh, to the Visual NLP. 
Um, basically, um, Visual NLP is a, a document understanding library that is developed by JSL. And well, it comes with a list of uh, curated features. So we have been uh, collecting models and features and putting together pipelines in a way that uh, we can actually deliver uh, useful um, useful features. And we can, we can actually deliver things that are useful, right? Um, many times you see there are, lo there are lots of things, you know, with uh, big promises in open source, uh, but most of the times those repos uh, fail to solve real life problems. So what we have done here is to actually uh, make sure that everything we uh, integrated into the library or we developed uh, into the library uh, can deliver, you know, valuable results. Um, we are practitioners, so we are applying this library uh, to real use cases all the time. Uh, we develop this library um, continually, right? And it's, uh, it's security-minded, meaning that you can uh, deploy this uh, on-premises, for example. Um, this, is a, this is not an API. So one thing that I wanted to point out is that this is not an API. So it's not that you need to send your DICOM files, you know, to some endpoint or anything like that, you can uh, deploy this uh, locally uh, on your own environment and have absolute control of what's happening with the data and where the data lives. And you don't have any um, web service calls or anything like that. So it's, it's absolutely uh, safe. OK. So this is a uh, brief architecture uh, description, you know, for the library, it relies on uh, Apache Spark uh, for distributing the data. As I mentioned, the DICOM files can be huge, so you need a way to actually tackle all that uh, size complexity. And then on top of that, we have a number of uh, features, higher level features, um, from which we're going to be using probably in the examples, the text detection and recognition, right? And, and probably um, some many are models uh, for detecting entities in text. Yeah, we're going to get into more detail about that pretty soon. OK, so uh, I think we can jump uh, to one of the uh, examples we have. Uh, we have to be really careful on the time we spend with, with each of these examples. Uh, by the way, um, the notebooks, uh, as I mentioned, are placed here. And something interesting is that you can actually uh, use a button that we have here to open these notebooks in Colab. If you see here, you have the uh, opening Colab button. You can just press there. And if you, if you follow the steps that are uh, present in the notebook, you can uh, upload the license and run all the examples there, and everything's going to work. OK? So here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to briefly explain uh, the notebook and how the data flows. Um, I think we can start on this cell. Here, we start a session for Spark. And after that, uh, we can start you know, importing uh, transformers from our library and defining pipelines, right? Uh, the first uh, transformer we have is uh, DICOM to metadata. Uh, this guy here is gonna take binary content um, that we're gonna put on the data frame and it's gonna return, um, it's gonna return metadata as uh, a column in a data frame, right? So what we're doing here is we are uh, reading uh, one example. Actually, there, I think there are, like three examples in this folder. Um, yeah, and we we start by just computing uh, some metrics uh, about um, the size of these files, right? And this, I mean, we have we only have three examples here, and this can can look like a toy example. But many times you can use this, you know, <laughs> when you have a big collection, or maybe, uh, for example, you have an S3 folder full of files that you know how many you have, you don't know the size. So you can start with only this uh, notebook to just get an idea of the um, complexity of the job that you're trying to attack, right? So um, next cell is going to be uh, showing some of the files. And I think um, 
we are not applying any limit here. So we're going to be showing the three or four we have in the folder, right? Uh, many times, of course, it's not that easy that you're going to be showing like 100 files on a Jupyter notebook, you know, just because the Jupyter notebook runs on a browser and the browser has, you know, memory limitations, as you may expect. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, um, the visualization for our DICOM files. And we're going to be um, calling the transform method, you know, on our input data that is DICOM DF. And we're going to get our results. And this is what the result looks like. We're just using the visualization of Jupyter, right? Um, number of things. The most important thing is here the metadata that is not showing uh, quite right because of it's being truncated by, by Jupyter. So we are using this cell here uh, to try to make sense of the JSON that is being returned for, for each of these files. OK, so now this looks a bit better, right? Uh, we have uh, all the fields you know, for each of the three files. Uh, and it's kind of easier you know, to understand what's happening here. Yeah. and. Then we're going to be transposing it using pandas just to, you know, to make it look a bit better. Yeah. And then, uh, and, uh, I mean, a number of other things. Uh, probably um, something nice here is uh, these statistics about the size of the, of the files according to the number of frames they have. So, um, yeah, you have different things. You have three files, you know, you have um, uh, an average uh, of uh, 751 frames per file, right? So this is coming from, a, th these files, you know, have like many frames, right? So this, you can use this actually as a proxy to estimate um, how hard or how much hardware you're going to need, you know, to process, um, to process, uh, your files. OK. OK, that was just a basic notebook, you know, for uh, introducing uh, the topic, right, uh, of, you know, working with um, Vision LP, um, loading some DICOM files, uh, try to see some results, try to get an idea of um, what the data collection looks like, OK? So next, uh, we're going to see um, some pipelines uh, for removing uh, text, which is basically uh, the most basic way of the identification we have. Uh, it's, it's not going to be, uh, I mean, it's not going to be very complex, uh, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to see how uh, some of these uh, models work okay so again i'm, I'm just taking a, another notebook from the um, from the same folder this time it's spark of cr that i can remove text and I, I do some initialization code as before same deal some imports but now uh the thing is it's getting a bit more interesting uh because uh we uh define uh some other transformers Right. Uh, we have first uh, the DICOM, DICOM splitter. And this one is actually um, helping us when we have uh, multiple frames within a single file. So what this is going to do is this is going to use uh, the um, Spark uh, capabilities that I explained before, you know, actually distributing uh, the data. So it's, it's going to work at the frame level. It's going to take one uh, DICOM file and it's going to, you know, split all the frames that it has uh, in multiple partitions um, of a data frame. So that's uh, that comes from Spark. Spark uh, is going to enable distributed proce processing uh, by splitting the data uh, on your data frame across different partitions, right? So what we're doing with this one is we're doing that split. You know, you have some uh, parameters, you know, uh, to actually decide, you know, what the partitions are going to look like. Uh, but yeah, uh, many times you have like, I don't know, two gigabytes uh, on a single file, right? Uh, so 
you want to go in parallel, you know, to, to process that one, right? So you can use this. Uh, the icon to image uh, v2 is gonna um, pull out images, you know, each of these uh, frames, right? Uh, it's gonna be an image. Then we're gonna be detecting text here. Uh, then we're gonna be uh, drawing regions. So once we detected the text, we're gonna have uh, as an output of, of this stage, we're gonna have a, a number of regions. Uh, we're gonna take the regions here and we're gonna be uh, drawing bounding boxes. So we hide all the text uh, on the image basically, right? This is what the uh, final pipeline is gonna look like. You know, with all our stages uh, defined and well here we have the same uh game we did before we are going to be loading uh the um the daikon file uh, in this example we only have one daikon file uh into uh, a data frame here we're plotting some documentation nothing important so i think the first one is yeah we're going to be like um showing what the, the file looks like uh, before the identifying, right? Um, maybe I want to zoom this a bit. Uh, oh, the, the thing is that uh, you can see that there's text on these images, right? And we are only uh, showing the first uh, four or five frames, I think, because there are more frames. And here uh, we apply the pipeline that we define over the input data and we get this result variable and we use the display daikon file um, function sorry uh, to actually display uh, the results okay so there you go um, you can see that the text is gone um, and again, we are only only showing a, a, a subset of all the frames, so we don't kill the browser, basically. Okay. Um, well, next, um, I want to uh, introduce, I mean, if you remember the agenda we have, um, um, yeah, we, we should uh, talk about uh, how we use NLP to actually uh, deal with different parts of the text in a different way. Basically, you don't want to just get rid of everything. Maybe still there, maybe uh, there's some information there that you want to keep, right? And instead of uh, instead of just getting rid of everything, you may want to, you know, just remove the some of some entities uh, that you can identify and respect all the other text that is present on the image. So in order for us to do that, in order for us to do that, we're going to be using some NLP uh, pipelines. And some uh, something that I want to touch briefly on is the streaming uh, idea, because the, this example has a number of, of things. One of uh, one of them is the NLP part, and another one is that it's going to be running. We're going to be running it on a streaming mode. Um, basically, the the, the streaming mode in, in Apache Spark is a way in you in, in which you can connect uh, one of these pipelines that we have just seen. You can connect uh, a pipeline like that uh, to a source, something something that is called a source. Uh, more most of the time, the source is. Uh, is a folder in some distributed file system. It can even be, you know, a Kafka uh, system. But just to to make a um, a, a simple, you know, and, and to gain some intuition, to make it simple and gain some intuition, we can uh, think of the source as a folder, right? So we connect uh, the stream uh, that is going to be listening. Uh, we connect it to a folder. Uh, every time someone drops a file in the folder, the stream uh, the stream is going to ingest that file and it's, it's going to be processing the file and it's going to be producing results and it's going to return the results to something that is called a sync. Right? This is basic streaming processing and we're going we're gonna to be applying the same idea 
And don't worry if you don't understand or you haven't uh, worked with streams before. It's not necessary. Uh, you're going to understand what, what is happening, definitely. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to, to do that clarification. And yeah, so let's let's jump directly in, into um, our example. By the way, before that, uh, you're going to notice that we have some links here in the comments of each of the notebooks. Uh, these are uh, you know links to some uh, blog posts about this topic. So feel free uh, to explore those uh, if you want. Uh, okay, so back to uh, our discussion on NLP uh, for the identification. Uh, you're gonna see that uh, this notebook has a, a number of other things, uh, but the basic ideas, you know, remain the same, right? Um, so we have the uh, the NLP pipeline definition here. Uh, you can think about this, you know, as a function that is going to be returning a pipeline model. You know, the pipeline model is going to be a model that is composed of several stages. So for now, uh, and until we get back to this, we can just think about the, the NLP pipeline as something that is being returned by this function, and we can uh, get back to it later, right? So now we can uh, jump into the uh, image processing part, right? Uh, we have a, a number of uh, transformers, right? Dicom to image, we, we saw this before. Uh, image text detector, right? Uh, image to text. So we have um, the images uh, uh, at the end of this stage. Then we're going to be detecting text. Then we're going to be uh, extracting the text you know, from the text regions. Right, and then at the end we have this guy here that is going to be uh, converting entities into uh, bounding boxes. So the question is, where are the entities coming from? If we go uh, down here uh, to the pipeline definition, we see that before the position finder is the NLP pipeline that we had that we mentioned before. Okay. So basically, uh, the DICOM file uh, is transferred to images. The images are used uh, to detect text on the images. We OCR, you know, the text. Then once we once we have the text, we uh, detect entities on the text using NLP. And then once we have the entities and some other things, you know, uh, we're gonna uh, return bounding boxes for the entities, right? So before we continue, we can just try to take a look, uh, yeah, before and after. So this is um, what it looks, you know, the, the image before the identification. And just ignore all these. We, we're going to get back to this later. And so many results here. Yeah. Here we see, you know, the, the bounding boxes on top of uh, the image, right? Uh, so basically what I, what I did here is to read from a result folder, right? Output path here is that sync that I mentioned before. So I've just pointed, you know, uh, the, the pipeline, um, no, not the pipeline, I just pointed, you know, the display DICOM uh, function to that folder. And I just inspected the results here, right? Uh, so this is just in terms of inputs and outputs, uh, what is the task that is being performed, and then we have some details, right? Um, as I mentioned, we can uh, get back to the NLP part, you know, the one that we uh, use here. There are a number of things to unpack here for sure. Um, if you uh, if you pay close attention to the uh, parameters. You know, we are passing uh, the name of the column that we need to uh, to ingest within the NLP pipeline. And we're passing, you know, the, the model uh, that is, a, is a, I think it's a key component uh, is the um, DNER that we're gonna be using, right? So if we jump to the, um, to the NLP pipeline, uh, we see that uh, we start, um, implementing, you know, uh, defining the pipeline the same way we did with the visual uh, part, right? This time uh, we have NLP uh, transformations, 
right? So we have a document assembler. This one is, you know, uh, concerned about uh, transforming raw text into something that we call annotations. All this is coming from Spark NLP library. Um, there are many resources uh, to learn uh, about this library, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be giving you some intuition here so you can understand what, what's happening. So we're going to be receiving uh, the text, as we mentioned, input column, input column. This one is coming from our OCR on the other uh, pipeline, OK? Uh, we're going to have, once we have a document, you know, and uh, it's, our text is formatted, in, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in an appropriate way, you know, it's the text plus some metadata. We're going to be calling a normalizer just to get rid of things like puntuation. Actually, there's, uh, there's there are many things that you can do according to what you need. Um, then we're going to detect sentences because all the stages coming afterwards, you know, work better on sentences. Of course, we're going to be tokenizing, right, um, the sentences. Then we're going to be using uh, these two guys here that you can think that they are going to be working together. We're going to uh, compute some embeddings uh, for the tokens, and we're going to be using an NER. The NER is basically, you know, a name entity uh, recognition model. Uh, in a nutshell, if you're not familiar, you fit text to the model, right? And it returns entities. So it means that if you have things like, I know, uh, the patient uh, uh, was admitted uh, into the hospital uh, at 11.30, you know, this model is going to return, uh, for example, events admitted to the hospital, uh, dates, 11.30, so according to which uh, entities your model is uh, uh, is searching for, basically, you're going to return, you're going to get different results, right? So, of course, we're going to have uh, the, the, the obvious example here is like uh, to have a model like this, you know, to detect social security number, patient IDs, age, uh, date of birth, you know, all the, the things that we care about when we are the identifying documents, okay? So the NER converter is basically um, performing some transformation on the entities. The entities remember that were computed at token level, so we actually need uh, to combine, you know, all the different pieces of the entities. So if you have uh, something like uh, I don't know uh, congestive heart failure, you have three tokens. But if you want uh, an NER, you know. Um, if, if you want a, a chunk, what is called a chunk, you know, you need a single string, you know, that says congestive heart failure, right? The, the three things connected together, right? This is the purpose of the NER converter. And the same way we did with the visual part, we are uh, creating a, a pipeline, you know, for the NLP part. And from now on, you can think of this uh, whole pipeline, you know, as a single unit, and you're going to be... Uh, placing this, you know, in the visual pipeline as yet another, you know, transformation as we do it here, right? We just drop it there and <clears throat> it's just another stage, right? Okay, now for the streaming part, I'm just going to use two minutes or maybe less uh, to explain how, how that works. Um, Okay. Mm. Okay, this is the, the definition, you know, for the streaming query. Um, we have the DICOM uh, streaming uh, data frame here. Uh, actually, it's a streaming data frame uh, in terms of, you know, um, Apache structured streaming. Uh, it's just, you know, like a somewhat any other data frame, but, you know, it supports this idea of um, continually growing, you know, the, the size of the table that is associated to it, right? So, um, yeah, once you get this uh, streaming data frame, you know, out of read stream, load, right? Once you do all this, you get your, your Daikon streaming data frame, and you can just use it, you know, uh, with the pipeline, right? The same way uh, as any other ordinary data frame, right? 
And when you apply that, right, you get this result, okay? And you're gonna be consuming that uh, data frame using this for each batch function. So uh, the, the streaming uh, pipelines are gonna be running on something that is called micro batch. So you can actually configure it to be, you know, a certain number of files at, at, at a time. So each time you receive one of, of these batches, this for each batch function is going to be called and you're going to be doing a number of things, right, with it. Uh, and for this one, we are, um, each, each time we, we receive results, uh, remember that the raw regions and Tycoon the identifier, these were not uh, placed on the pipeline itself, on the main pipeline. Uh, that's because we want to call them here, right? So we are drawing regions, <clears throat> And then we are uh, calling the DICOM the identifier on it, right? And afterwards, we are um, once we did this these two steps, we are sending uh, the results to disk, basically, right? So let's see. <clears throat> yeah, you see here that um, that you don't have these two guys, right, in the pipeline, okay? So that's why we call them separately, okay? Um, yes. Um, yeah, metadata identification, by the way, is happening here, right? Okay, uh, next. Um, yeah, next I want to, um, and I, we don't have that much time. Um, yeah, I want to touch a bit on um, the idea of um, the identifying metadata or using metadata to uh, the identify the image, which is uh, basically uh, a, a simple idea, right? Um, many times, I mean, instead of you uh, coming up with um, models for uh, detecting entities in the text and, and undergoing all the transformation, you know, from um, from uh, pixels, you know, to to text and trying to 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 actually get the best possible NLP models. Uh, there's an alternative approach, and I wouldn't say alternative, but it's a complementary approach, right? Because um, you can actually uh, use it, you know, with the NER uh, ML models. Uh, it's basically the idea to 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 use uh, information from the metadata to try to catch elements in the image, right? So uh, I'm going to just uh, briefly ex uh, explain uh, this notebook in which uh, we show an example for that. Um, so we jump directly and we have the NLP pipeline here. And this time I'm going to start with the NLP pipeline because I want to, uh, to explain something that is happening here. Uh, that is the chunk merge approach. If you remember at this time, we, we, we had called you know, the NER converter, if you remember previous pipeline, and we ended up with chunks of text. Remember the congested heart failure example, right? Things like that. Uh, this chunk merge approach is gonna help us to merge uh, entities coming from different sources. So that's a simple idea, but it's super powerful, right? That means that you can have uh, specialized models uh, uh, working uh, detecting different things right and you can merge the results of these models right okay this is where uh, this guy comes into play that is dicom the identifier um basically uh, if we go to uh, cha -cha -cha here right uh this this uh, model is going to be receiving um Positions, you know, this is text and coordinates and the metadata. And it's going to be returning entities, right? So this is the key takeaway is that we're going to have uh, another, so we're going to introduce another source for these entities, for these NLP entities, right? And the way these entities are going to be uh, found basically is by making sense of both the metadata and, you know, uh, the text on the image, right? that way so back to the to our pipeline we have icon to metadata we have icon uh, to image uh, we have 
and detection of text. We have uh, OCR. We have uh, the diagram data identifier that we just explained, and we have position finder, which is gonna take you know the entities uh, and try to return bounded boxes as always, you know. But this time, the the entities that it's gonna receive are are gonna be like you know specially created, you know, using two different models, right? Um, the Dicon Glow Regions is doing the same thing uh, it was doing before. And the Dicon Metadata Data Identifier, right, that we put uh, at the end, right? We don't want to put this uh, before because otherwise we're going to be uh, preventing this guy from reading metadata, right? Useful metadata clues, you know, for the identification, right? Uh, yeah, this is uh, what it looks like. This time we have everything, you know, on the same pipeline. We are not calling things separately. Um, yeah, we can take a look at the results. I think this is the input file, right? Some input files. So super quickly before we run out of time. Uh, and. For a second, I'm going to zoom out, right? And uh, just to take a look. Uh, yeah, Dicon the identifier is going to return the entity column, right? And yeah, so that's going to be one source for um, for entities. And I'm, I'm just zooming out so we can see that we, for each of these files, right? Each row here, which is kind of big, has output from multiple columns but i want to focus on the entity column which is coming from you know that icon the identifier you know the special sauce here and of course the nr chan which is the one that we saw before you know in the first entity pipeline that uh, we explained right so for each of the files we have you know a row okay and you can see that uh, here on the entity column we actually have uh some uh some entities that were that were you know catch uh, that way you know by using the metadata, okay. And here you can see I think you can we are uh, now it's it's time for zooming in. Um, yeah, you can see that here um, if you inspect these files, um, for example, in this one, uh, this this entity is present you know in metadata. And by inspecting the metadata, we were able, you know, to remove it from the image, right? Uh, this example, of course, is is present on the uh, uh, repo with all the, you know, along with all the other notebooks. So feel free to go there and inspect it. We are running out of time. <laughs> um, okay, um, I'm just gonna take. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take one minute to explain uh, a slide I have here. Uh, so basically, we encourage everybody to, to try these uh, things uh, by themselves. And there are um, many ways in which we can work together. Uh, typically, we have these three uh, categories, you know, for different engagements. Uh, you can license the software. Right, and you can do things yourself. Right, you can ask uh, for professional services. Right, or you can use managed services. Right, so um, we are happy um, to discuss any of these models. If anyone wants to uh, to reach out, we do have um, yeah, we have uh, some contact information on the on the slide. If you want to to reach out and ask about you know how to run examples or discuss any other topic right and also there's um yeah there's a slide here with some resources um library documentation you know the link to the trial license the link to the workshop repo yeah uh okay so uh we can jump uh to the question section <clears throat> 